There we go. Call in the Capitol. Call in the Capitol. Hi, you there? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, Emily. How nice to see you. Hi, oh, you Hello. too. How are you, John? Not too bad at all. A brave new world with digital coffees and so on. It's, coffee, it's rather yeah. futuristic, isn't it? It's, it's this really habit is. of doom and such things. Yeah, what are you drinking? It's just it's just some some coffee. I, I ground the beans myself. I got a coffee grinder from eBay, and uh, I, I'm grinding the beans. There's something very pure about that. It's very nice. I'm very jealous. I've got oh gosh, it's awful. Let me show you what I've got. I've got sachets, but I did find sachets of oat milk lattes, which I am missing. I'm missing my local coffee shop. I must say. So I'm very jealous of your fresh beans. I have a bit of a challenge for you, John, while we, oh, yeah. drink, our <laughs> while we drink our coffee. Um, and this challenge was kind of inspired by the first time I interviewed you. When was it? A couple of years ago? Uh, uh, yeah, something like that. Yes, yeah, so over in um, London at the Union Club on Greek Street. Mm. It was. I remember it well. It was really lovely. And the thing that I remember most is the first chunk of conversation. You were just speaking in impressions the whole time and I was sitting there in a fit of giggles um, hearing all these different voices and genuinely wondering I wonder what John Coleshaw actually sounds like <laughs> and then the Lancashire accent came through and I got to know the real you but I was just impressed by your range of impressions and uh, so my challenge is to see if a throughout the course of our, our coffee and conversation you can come up with 26 different people different voices um and go through them alphabetically as we have our drinks what do you say well we have to give that a try we have to give that a try very often in, in dead ringers or other impersonation based shows we have to improvise a bit um yeah. so hopefully the alphabetical hooks will lead us to enough characters and sometimes are we allowed to be slightly tenuous for some of them maybe of course the, the more tenuous the better i say oh. um <laughs> okay. well let, let's try let's give this a run let's give this a run we start with the letter a i suppose um probably one of the most reassuring characters of all this creature the pale red this perhaps reptilian, known as a zygon, the suckers for absorbing nutrients and for generally being frightening. Zygons are to be avoided. Uh, <laughs> Very good else? start. Strong start, John. I think we had to, we had to, we, we should always anchor it to Doctor Who as much as possible, I think. Oh, but if of we can. course. Of course. I mean, we're both fans, aren't we? We're both oh. fans. Yes, yes. Huge admirers of Doctor Who, so it's going to be um, inevitable, I think, that Doctor Who is going to feature. <laughs> B, 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 B. Um, a few years ago, um, I portrayed David Bowie in a radio drama called The Final Take. And I love a quote. The first quote that I, I heard David Bowie say on, um, on YouTube was, um, if you feel safe in the area that you're working in, you're probably not working in the right area. Always go a little further into the water then you feel you're capable of being in. Go a little bit out of your depth. And when you feel your feet aren't quite touching the bottom, then you're just about in the right area to do something exciting. And I think that's one of the wisest and loveliest quotes. Okay, the letter C. Uh, let's go for cow. Okay, um, I'm <laughs> going to stop you there. I think that was a very good performance. What I think is really fantastic, Emily. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. All through this lockdown, locking down is not what you have done. You have been one of the most driven, motivated people to bring people together, watching a lot of Doctor Who material. I think you've spread a lot of joy. I really do. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you, Simon. That's unusually kind for you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a yes from me. It's a yes from me. Um, I wanted the Simon Calburn. <laughs> No, he, he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. You would. He's you a would, father now. He's he's softened now. He's a father, hasn't he? Exactly. I wonder what Eric Cowell, his little boy, sounds like. Probably. Okay, Daddy, I'm going to stop you. That was, <laughs> frankly, I hope he sounds like that. Um, yeah, <laughs> he 
probably does. What letter have we reached now? I've lost We've track. only reached D. We've done three. We're on to D now. D. Come on, there's only oh, one to this one, surely. I'm sorry. Let's just do the Donald. Let's get him out of the way there. That's very, very terrible, very disrespectful. Um, I will visit Stratford upon Avon, birthplace of William Shatner. So very beautiful. <laughs> okay. That's enough of him. E. E. Okay. Well, the yeah. intensity, the intensity of Christopher Eccleston were clinging to this little world, you and me. That's not quite the right quote. You were fantastic. You know what? So was I. Come the 60th anniversary of the show. Mm. I really hope he's there. I really hope he's there. I, I keep forgetting which letter we're up to. Oh, though. What's our we're on S. Oh, um, yeah, one of my all-time favourites, Frank Bruno, yeah. Frank Bruno, he's very funny saying Doctor Who praises the God of Light, reverse the polarity of the neutron flow, and that was all like sort of the master, and then he won't be doing all the bad stuff what he's, like, going to do. <laughs> An all-time favourite, that one. You know what, it's great to hear Doctor Who quotes done in different voices. There's, I really love that. I don't know why, but hearing a specific Doctor's quote read by either another Doctor or Frank Bruno. Uh, <laughs> sounds great. That would be, uh, you could imagine um, a, a post-fight interview, Harry Carpenter interviewing F Frank Bruno. Well, that was yeah. a marvellous performance, Frank. Uh, some will say very, very brave. Um, how do you respond to that? Yeah, well, Harry, you know, um, being brave isn't just a, a matter of not being frightened. You know? it's, it's being frightened and doing what you have to do anyway. <laughs> 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 they're such beautifully <laughs> written quotes, aren't they? You know, they're such beautifully profound quotes. They are. The they are. Um, <laughs> oh, John. G. G. G takes us to Ricky Gervais. I think he should do a Doctor Who quote. Uh, okay, how? Oh. Oh, yeah. Puny, defenseless bipeds. Okay. Oh. Yeah, they have survived flood, famine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Now, here they are, okay, <laughs> sitting out eternity, yeah, <laughs> waiting, yeah, waiting to begin a new life. They're indomitable. Indomitable. Ooh. <laughs> that suits him, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, H. Uh, H. Uh, um, okay, uh, let's have a end his swap. Yes, I think uh, he's one of those. Um, I think he's one of the reasons why the locked down version of I Got News For You is working so, so marvellously because he's even more quizzical, even more bewildered. And I think of all the interviews where people are being interviewed in front of bookshelves, um, <laughs> his are the best books. Yes, his, his, yes, his are the best books. Bar. Um, right, I. We're well, making some progress here. Ah, let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, a few weeks ago, I re-watched the film Invictus. Uh, it's, it's a tenuous link here, the letter I for Invictus, where this is where Nelson Mandela was portrayed by the wonderful Morgan Freeman. Freeman. Morgan Freeman is... <laughs> yes, I've just got to settle down and just reach that tone here. That's one of those, I think, if ever there was a voice that would give advice to the doctor himself, I think the doctor would take advice from Morgan Freeman. I was once like you. When I was younger, I was older. With silver hair. Sometimes I was called a cosmic, a cosmic hobo, then a dandy, a clown. But as you get older, you get younger, more chilled. Look how chilled I was by the time I had my 10th regeneration. I was much older, but much younger. That's the beauty of the workings of time. <laughs> <laughs> I slightly hypnotized myself there. <laughs> I mean, what a voice though. Morgan oh. Freeman's voice has such a rich quality to it, doesn't it? It's like velvet and treacle. It's absolutely gorgeous. And maybe this, this is to my unattuned ear, I don't know, but it sounds a little bit to me like Barack Obama. I guess it's, it's slightly richer than Obama's, but is there similarities there? I think it's a little bit lower. It's a little bit lower. It's spoken in much more of a one-to-one -one way. But if we were to raise that up, 
if we would have made that more intense and as if we were talking to an entire crowd, then I think that he is not too far away. And I look at what the president, president is doing with a certain amount of, uh, of dismay. Let's get ready to rumble. That was I. We're on J. Ah. Uh, there's only one. The first doctor I remember watching. Oh, of course, uh, the wonderful uh, the wonderful John Pert here, yeah, a splendid raconteur, uh, a beautiful voice with that wonderful sharp resonance. And of course, uh, I, I asked my agent to uh, uh, audition for the part of the doctor. And I got this call and uh, I said, how did, how did it get on? And there was silence. And I said, oh, I'm sorry I asked. I shouldn't have brought it up. And my agent said, you've been on the shortlist uh, for about six months. And uh, I love that, that resonance in John Pertwee's voice. And I, I had the chance to interview him once back in 1993. Uh, I was working as a DJ on Radio Wave in Blackpool. And I noticed that John was bringing his one man show to the Charter Theatre in Preston. And I thought, well, let me see if I can get in there and interview him. Uh, and his agents, they granted me a little interview. Uh, they said, come to the theatre at quarter past six, go knock on the dressing room door, which I did. And, there was this dressing room door with John Pertwee written on it. And I could hear that, that conversation uh, behind the door in that way, that familiar voice. And I was nervous to, nervous to knock on the door. But eventually I did. Yes, come in. And I wandered in there and he was so charming, such a, a wonderful raconteur. And he said, oh yes, yes you've, uh, you've come to do the chat, haven't you? Uh, sit, sit down, have some cake, have some cake. Immediately you're at your ease. Yeah, um, it says cake. Um, and I was chatting to him about how many times my name, Coleshaw, has been mispronounced as, as Coles Hill, Coleslaw, Cauliflower, all of them. <laughs> and and uh, he said, ah, well, I know what you in there. Uh, fetch me my, my autobiography. And there was a copy of his book, Moon Boots and Dinner Suits there. And he opened it up. Here are some of the, the ways that my name has been mispronounced. Uh, Jan Putrid, Master J. P. Witt, uh, J. <laughs> Jay Petrol, and he went on like that. But uh, a charming, charming fellow, and to see his show and all of those raconterial skills, commanding an audience, just simply standing there on the stage. Magnificent. Jay K, K next. K, that's one of those awkward ones. Maybe now, here's, a, here's an interesting, tenuous one. Kevin Turley was yep. a comic character created by uh, Rick Mail. Okay. And so often, it's quite good to do a bit of a Rick Mail. You've got to take a deep breath. I just want to step away from the microphone, but it's louder than usual. <laughs> That's probably all I can do a Rick Mail. Otherwise, I will sawn my own neck off with the intensity. <sighs> Let me just do Morgan Freeman. A little more Morgan Freeman just to settle myself back down. <laughs> L. Oh, L, L, L. Um, I think Les Dawson comes to mind. Wonderful Les Dawson. Les Daw I, I adore Les Dawson because um, of it, the way he would write his jokes and gags and stories, some of them were so, so poetic, uh, so erudite, Shakespearean at times. And then the punchline would come and it would hit you in the face like a custard pie. My favourite uh, routine of Les Dawson. As I gazed up to observe the majesty of the night sky, a purple vault fretted with a myriad points of light as the stars glistened like diamonds cast across black velvet, with Jupiter, Mars and Saturn festooned in their orbital majesty. The amber chariot of the crescent moon ascending from the horizon. As I gazed up to observe this majestic sight, I thought to myself, you know, I really must put a roof on this lavatory. <laughs> Love Les Dawson. <laughs> Excellent, John. Excellent. Um, I'm going to um, plug the battery lead in. I'm going to plug in the lead to the iPad here in oh case because no. I've been burning on for so long. Um, we don't want you I to don't... disappear. No, let me just. Uh... There we are. Uh, I've reversed the polarity of the neutron flow, so the <laughs> iPad should be free of the force field now. Um, and we're on M now. M. 
Um, okay. I think let's go for Andy Murray. Let's go for Andy Murray. I think there are two different types of Andy Murray that you get. Oh, one of them, that was a really tough game. Djokovic played like a machine. It was a great honor to be in a match like that, but to be on the losing side of it is a tough thing to take. My mum is going to absolutely kill me. <laughs> uh, as opposed to the other kind of Andy Murray. I've just won Wimbledon for the second time. I am ecstatic. <laughs> There's a, I'm trying to see if I can get from Andy Murray to Morgan Freeman. Sure. So like if we just sort of have that resonance there and then just sort of like take away the Scottish lilt and gradually metamorphosize it to that American tone. Man, that's not such a leap as you might think. No. Who would have thought that Morgan Freeman and Andy Murray were boys neighbors? They're not too far. <laughs> Pitch Wait. ship. Yeah, yeah, totally. They're very similar, aren't they? It was they are, they are. Accent shift. Yeah, just click it. Some of them, certain, we, have, we have a thing in impressions that we call voice neighbours, okay. where certain characters are poles apart in, in terms of their persona, but vocally, yeah, it's just a short little move that way or that way, and it can, it can get you there. So it's a very interesting one. John Major, the former Prime Minister, make him a bit more aggressive, he goes into Michael Caine. That's another example. I'm going to put you on the spot here, and you might need to think and come back to it, but can you think of um, my voice neighbour? You've got a lovely, a lovely efficiency to your voice. It's very clear, um, polished, rather, you know, rather crystal. Rather, someone like Kira Knightley, someone like that. Oh, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, something like that, Kira Knightley. Who's your voice neighbour? I do wonder, I do wonder who it might be. I suppose if uh, if I was to take this tone and just uh, deepen it ever so slightly, make it a little bit more gruff and uh, talk about uh, the great uh, Beth Nielsen Chapman, then maybe I've got Bob Harris from Radio 2. Or if I go in another direction, if I have my, if I have my sort of uh, own tone here, and so it's like, turn up the Lancashire and make it even more than perhaps Paddy McGuinness. But I wouldn't want to <laughs> stay there too long. So I try to rein that back, you know, rein that back and soften it down and maybe end up somewhere near Gary Barlow. Hey, fantastic. Okay. And, ah. Well, I'm going to have to do the Brigadier. I was played by uh, Nicholas Courtney. Um, absolutely wonderful chap. Uh, wonderful voice. Uh, very distinctive, and uh, a certain that certain mouth shape, uh, which really uh, uh, tunes the uh, the tone of the voice through. Uh, he would do that sometimes. I've got such a treasured memory of Nicholas Courtney. There was um, a Doctor Who tribute event put on, I think, for the fortieth anniversary, and Barry Letts was there, and he gave a wonderful speech. The Doctor was a mystery, an, an enigma. And he gave this speech, which just absolutely transfixed everybody. Um, you know, Terence Dix was there as well. You know, talking about some of the uh, some of the writing techniques that we do. You know, and, and this kind of thing you see. And um, yes, you know, John would if he if he wasn't too sure of a script. You know, some of the gobbledygook as he used to say, he would um, he, he would have a chat. We'd sort it out. You know, um, and also um, Nicholas Courtney was there. Now, of course, everybody uh, treated him like a long lost uh, friend. Uh, everybody was uh, feeling very, very uh, joyful at uh, just the great uh, presence and uh, that, the, the warmth of the fellow. Uh, and at the end of the event, we all went to a nearby pub, uh, the Audley. Uh, I love the way he said it, the Audley. <laughs> and we all went in there, it was nearly Christmas. And we were all tucked into a corner, got a pint of bitter, pint of Guinness. And it started to snow outside, and it was just—it was just such a, such a treasured, treasured uh, memory of wonderful uh, Nicholas Courtney. We should move on um, to O, which is our next letter. O. Oh, Obi Wan. Yes, Obi Wan. That's a name I haven't gone by for a long time. Yes, a very long time. If my dream job ever comes my way. And I'm asked to portray the doctor. I think that's everyone's dream job. Uh, 
I'm sure I, I would have a little soup song, just a tiny one, of Alec Guinness's Obi-Wan Kenobi. Would you? That, I think so, just, just for that sense of eternal wisdom over centuries. I think I'd just have that there so that when John Pertwee did this as well, when a threat, when an alien, when an enemy appeared, usually in a great big shock, he would just know exactly what to do. Mm. He wouldn't be rattled instinctively, the right reaction would just appear like that. That was a wonderful quality. Uh, um, and I love the way that Alec Guinness's Obi-Wan Kenobi would do a similar thing. The movement would be very small, but the sense of conviction would be huge. I'd, I, I've pictured a scene in my mind, um, the opening scenes of a brand new doctor, somewhere at um, an, an icy setting with the northern lights in the background. And just as the doctor, they, they gather themselves and go back into the TARDIS, shut the door, and as they dematerialize and go off to the next place they're going to, a safe place just to really gather themselves. I would love the, the green and the red of the northern lights to be somehow affected by the pulsing dematerialization of the TARDIS and to take on the shimmer of the title sequence of the third doctor, those concentric diamonds, like that. The northern lights to turn into that title sequence and then away. Ah, that's so good. That's gorgeous. That's a gorgeous picture. A little kiss to the past. P. 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 Uh, well, speaking of the Northern Lights, Professor Brian Cox would describe this as a wonder of the solar system because these occur on many planets. We've seen them on Saturn and Jupiter and the gas giants and the Aurora Borealis and the Aurora Australis, the Southern Lights. This is the interaction of the magnetosphere of the planet Earth responding to the solar wind. And that is the phenomena made visible. <laughs> it's very canny of Brian Cox, the, the way that he speaks at this pace, which is slow and enigmatic, and it makes it easier to fill an hour-long programme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's one of my favourite characters to do of the, of the present time, uh, Professor Brian Cox. It's brilliant. And, uh, you get the mannerisms as well. You move like him. When you're you don't just sound like these people. You you kind of take on their whole persona in your body, but you still look like John Coleshaw. It's very confusing. <laughs> <laughs> right now we're on to Q. Q. Challenge to mm. find the Q. 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 Uh, why don't we have um, one of the most interesting and barnstorming um, uh, news journalist presenters and he reminds me of Magnus Pike uh, the the scientist from yesteryear uh, Richard Quest from CNN he quite literally speaks in this way we do not know at this stage how the president will react but tune in to Richard Quest around the world on CNN tonight he's, uh, <laughs> he's remarkable Richard Quest there is a character to watch out for. Ah, um, what if we have Robbie Williams? Yes. Now, we, with him, we start with just a little, he's got a certain smirk that he does. <laughs> you know, that sort of look where he'd be, you know, at the Royal Albert Hall and just looking at the audience and, you know, yeah, can't quite believe it. You know, and that Stoke accent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I was born in a pub on Oliver Reed's birthday. Bodes well, doesn't it? <laughs> I love yeah. Robbie Williams. He's got there's an unpredictability about him. Can you sing in impressions, or is that not something you do? Um, singing impressions. Ozzy Osbourne. I might need a bit of um, vocal treatment, a bit of reverb. <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne. He's got a kind of um, trying to think of some words now. 
Um, you see the words buffering. There's a song he does called Dreamer. I'm, um, I'm getting the words up for you, John. Gazing through the window at the world outside. Wondering, will Mother Earth survive? <laughs> That's Ozzy Osbourne. Um, so with that resonance. Um, I do leave my woman because she wasn't helping <laughs> with my life. With Ozzy, you brush away hair that you haven't got. Um, I can do that for you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, if, if you were Ozzy Osbourne's daughter, he'd be, he'd be so proud, you know, that'd be just like amazing and, and all, all that sort of stuff. I'm glad you're keeping regulation with all the letters of... Yeah, I'm trying. We're... S. 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 Yeah. I know, I know. Sometimes you meet characters who you impersonate and you never quite know which way it's going to go, whether they'll, they'll take the joke or not. And one of the most unusual was with Lord Sugar. Yes. Lord Sugar, and I think it was at um, it was at the BAFTA Craft Awards, um, and he was a few rows away, uh, just in the preamble, and he was with Nick Hewer, who I know from Countdown. You know when I've been on there, mm. and Nick Hewer was there, and he sort of pointed across to me. He sort of pointed across, said, "Oh yeah, that's as if to say, yes, that's the fellow who does you over there." I thought, well, I'm in trouble now. And then Lord Sugar, he did that apprentice hand that he does, like that. From a long way away, he did the apprentice finger. Quite uh, you know, the your buyer. <laughs> it is very important. And he started to walk towards me. And I thought, oh, goodness gracious, we're in serious trouble here. Um, but, you know, he was surprisingly very complimentary. And I was quite chuffed actually. He said, of all the people, who impersonate me, I think that you get the closest. So <laughs> keep doing it, but do it better. <laughs> Otherwise, you're fired. T. Oh. Well, I can't think of anybody else, can you? <laughs> no. <laughs> that was, um, oh, oh, oh. There's not many people who can, uh, I, I love that wonderful interview you did with uh, Tom Baker some, some time ago. Well, uh, I, I, I travelled a lot. You know, I, I don't think I should... Uh, I've, sort of been, I've sort of been everywhere. I've never known anybody who, whose voice is identifiable. Just from a little sound. Yes, well... Oh, mm. Yes, quite. Well, I, uh, mm. Any little nuance? And you, you have it right there, don't you? You have it right there. Conversationally, it's very interesting when he's talking about certain works that he's done. And uh, Dougie Camfield directed that. And um, we were also in awe of him. And also, John Leeson, dear John Leeson, he, what an ally. What a great joy it was to film with, with John, having such a great friend there, you know. And it, it, it sort of played into uh, the atmosphere of working to... Uh, to be amongst friends, I do, I do think it translated into, uh, into what we were do doing. Yeah, yes, that's right. <laughs> Your Tom is uncanny, honestly, it is incredible. And your Tom Baker laugh as well. That the laugh is very identifiable, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they had rocking, uh, <laughs> rocking back there. When he returns, he'll give that, uh, you know, when the laugh is sort of fading away a little. And yeah. Yes, that's the that he'll give. <laughs> yes, yes, I've never heard it before, yes. I think perhaps this one and, uh, and Morgan Freeman and the sharp uh, resonance of Mr. Pertwee. If I had to choose one of those, if I had to choose three voices only to use, I think those would be the ones. That brings us on to you. It's one of those awkward ones um, that you'd think it'd be simple, but it's quite tricky. Uh, you, 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 you. Um, is there anything that just occurs to you now? The letter U. Those watching this will be calling out all they sorts. Will. And commenting. And yeah, but unfortunately we can't see or hear that now. Uh, Yuri Geller. Yes, Yuri Geller. That is a good one. That is a good one. People who do not believe this, they are close-minded. They are close-minded. Um, 
Here we see, okay, I have, uh, I have a spoon here. Now concentrate, concentrate. We have to, we have to bend this, we have to bend the spoon like that. Can you feel the energy coming? Can you feel, right, I want you to close your eyes and really concentrate. Right. Close your eyes, send the energy. Are your eyes closed? Mm -hmm. It worked. Look, you can open your, it worked. <laughs> You have the energy. You are not close-minded. Look Did at that. Bend your spoon. <laughs> oh, the, the energies. It was the energies. It was the energies and the residual and the energies. They they did that. Yes, they did that. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to steal your coffee now? <laughs> uh, at a more creative angle. I'll have to do some yoga. <laughs> I fixed it. I fixed it. We're up to V. V. Uh, yeah, V, V. I think that would probably be Jeremy Vine. Would love to get your thoughts on this. Have you been having conversations which have resulted in your cutlery being distorted? <laughs> it might have been just an impromptu Yuri girl that you took on yourself. Has your cutlery been damaged by this? Uh, 88291, love to get your thoughts on this. W. W. Um, I love the way that um, William Shatner, he has this wonderful sarcasm and saying a word in this kind of manner. If we exaggerate, that's where it goes. What if you uh, morphed him with Will I Am and you had Will I Am Shatner? <laughs> I thought that was a great vocal performance and the way that you just went on that stage and made the song. Oh, I thought that was dope. It was so dope. Right. X. W yes, W. We've got the, the Prince of Wales. Yes. Cufflink fiddle, cufflink fiddle. Yes. I'm, I'm just coming over here because I know the letter X is there. And it's, yeah, um, see you for them for time. Um, what are we going to do that one? Let me have a think for you. We might have to be tenuous on this one. Um, how about Alexander Armstrong? Alex and Armstrong. People call him Zander, right? And that begins with X. Yes, they do. <laughs> okay, let's just have a quick uh, Richard Osman just to get us. Um, let's look at through uh, some of the pointless answers we had there. Okay, sensorites, you could have those. That's a pointless answer. Uh, crotons, another good pointless answer. Uh, the macro, very good. Also, the um, the mining robot. Well done if you said any of those at home. Okay, thank you, Richard. Okay, uh, Emily, Emily. Uh, what do you do? What do you do? Okay, capital city, starting with B. Yes, I, I, I've enjoyed doing that. I've never done him before, but I enjoyed that little opening gambit. So much more. Okay, turn into Ricky Gervais for no reason. I enjoy doing that so much. I promise to research it and listen, like do it better. Okay. Oh, yes. I will. I will add him to the repertoire. Big point. Hang on. Let me just. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm hoping this will show. <gasps> You've got a trophy. A pointless trophy. It's very it's heavy. Cold, isn't it? It's it cold, is. but heavy. It will probably make a good paperweight. It's like that way I am in the metabolist crystal. <laughs> <laughs> the metabolist crystal, there you are. <laughs> That's what he really uses his pointless trophy for. A doctor who props. Yes, exactly. <laughs> will emphasize uh, <laughs> your will and your genius. There we are. <laughs> the letter Y. Another tricky one. Um, it does, it gets set. Uh, Yoda. <gasps> Great wisdom have you. Needs that you must. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. I will try to speak this wisdom. I shall. And not sound like Grover from Sesame Street. Also done by the great Frank Oz. I do love you, Adra. I hope that there is, um, I hope there is some science fiction project in the future, where the doctor will meet Obi-Wan 
and Yoda and just have a chat, just have an encounter, just work together, just for a little time. Wouldn't that be wonderful? They'd have so much they could work together with and learn from each other. Finally, we are on the letter Z. What are we going to end on, John? Z. Um, we could perhaps have a Zygon. But I think we need more than just those. Um, let's have a think. That's cleared my throat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, of course, of course, of course. Uh, Benjamin Zephaniah, that wonderful poet. Maybe he could do a Spike Milligan poem. A Spike Milligan poem recited by uh, a fellow poet, Benjamin Zephaniah. A baby sardine saw her first submarine. She was frightened and looked through a peephole. Oh, come, 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 said the sardine's mum. It's only a tin full of people. <laughs> Beautiful. A very silly thing on which to, uh, what else are we going to do with the letter Z? Yeah. John, you're so Thank brilliant. You. That was quite a workout, but an <laughs> enjoyable one, a very enjoyable one. You should rest your voice now. <laughs> yes, back to Morgan Freeman mode. Back to the mode of Morgan. <laughs> I might spend the rest of my life this way. Yeah, if next time anyone hears John Coleshaw doing anything and he's stuck as Morgan Freeman, you will know why. <laughs> oh, John, it's been an absolute pleasure to catch up with you. Oh, thank you, Emily. And thank you for all of those wonderful watch-alongs you've got started. And um, it's been, you know, when people look back on this lockdown period, I think people will think of, they'll think of Captain Tom and his wonderful achievement. They'll think of um, everybody being better neighbours to one another. And a big, big part of it will be these great watch-alongs that you have instigated, that have brought so many people together in uh, a shared sense of being together and letting people have ideas and just celebration. You've been such a show through this time and I think it's going to be one of the things people will remember. Oh, you're too nice. Stop being nice. It is true, <laughs> it is true. This is praise and it needs to be stated on the record. Anyway, we'd better say goodbye, otherwise we could natter all day, couldn't we? Yes. We really could stay safe, look after yourself. Yes, you too, Emily. We will catch up soon. Okay, all the best. Head on. See you. Bye. 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 -bye.